Hello everybody and welcome to the Labyrinth of Limitations and Happy Thanksgiving. Um, for this little labyrinth I'm actually uh, responding to a challenge from my friend Chris over at Things I Learned from Barry Harris. And um, uh, his most recent uh, episode is about the beauty of half steps, in particular in the scales of chords. Strongly recommend that episode. It is fantastic. And it connects to something we've been talking about. And so I thought I would share just some other perspectives. And this is kind of an ongoing thing. It's kind of new to me and wonderful. But it connects to what we've been talking about with the family. And the family is, you know... Like, this beautiful sound is the result of the family, in my book. Now, a certain person could say, like, say... You know, someone could say, um... You know, from Thelonious Monk. So this... This sound, you could say it is G, you know, 6 and flat 9 or 13 with flat 9. I mean, yeah, 13 with a flat 9, you could say that. But you could also say this is just E major triad on top of G, which is true. And E major and G share a special relationship because they are family. What do I mean by that? Well, here is G7. And here's the diminish that can substitute for G7. You know, that's the diminished. And if I go up... Uh, I'm sorry, if I, if, I, if I take a different note of this diminished and move it down, that's E7. So the minor third relationships of uh, dominant seventh chords, um, the, the minor third related dominant seventh chords are all family because of this relationship. So here's E, here is B7 related to that same diminished, and here is D flat 7, otherwise known as the triatone sub, right? You know, so those sounds are connected to that, and it has to do with something called near symmetry and all these wonderful, really powerful concepts that really um, are kind of in the background here working for us. So let's look at how we're going to interface with Chris's video and how I'm going to respond, okay? So here's my response. It's talking about this. This. So I got, that's the six on the five, going to G, and I go down two semitones. And I go to C major, and this is a move that Barry always tells us we should do because it makes us aware of that relationship of here's the diminished to G, the diminished, I go up, and then I go up one more on that same string, and I find the six on the five. And that is a two semitone distance from here to here for D minor six and G seven. Two semitones. What if I split those up? What if I share one of those semitones with one of the other voices? So here's my D minor six. I'm going to go down by one semitone, but I'm also going to go down by one semitone there, and this is now E7. So listen to this. Try to do that without buzzing. So it is, um, I was doing... So what happened there is that I went family, but all I did was, what I'm doing in my mind is I'm thinking of D minor six, I'm identifying the fifth of this chord, which I need to see in all my D minor sixes. Here's D minor six, this is the fifth of the D minor six chord. Here's the root, this is the sixth, this is the third, this is the fifth. So I'm gonna move down this note, one semitone, and this note, one semitone, and I'll get pretty that's D flat seven but I'm just treating it like borrowing like viewing the half steps so I could go like you know right or I could go like um, so I could borrow one note half step below I'm sorry one note half step below but I could go or I'm just doing a weird finger and what does that do that gives me B flat seven same sound there so I got stuck for a second so the recipe is this I identify where my fifth is 
and I flatten any other note in addition to that one, and I will get one of the other family members. If I just flatten this one too, I will get the dominant seventh that is my actual dominant seventh. But if I flatten the fifth string plus this A, so that's pretty. I could do that. And, pretty stuff and then uh, I'll flatten this note I'm always gonna flatten this and plus something else this plus something else so I'll go you know or I'll go sorry um, so I go and go and then what am I doing here so here I went out by contrary motion so I went move out to the diminished and drop three. I went out to drop two and four. But instead of hitting this chord that I'm imagining on mine, which is a D minor six with a drop two and four, like there's drop two, there's drop two and four, I'm going to take my A, move it down a half step. I'm going to take my that second string note and move it down. So I get two family members out of that. Look at that. I go, this is E7. flat seven and then see this is kind of related to what I was doing with the scale of scales but the scale of scales would be dominant seven flat five and then something else but instead I'm going I have this raised and that makes you know so it's kind of connected to the same type of voice leading ideas let's try um, instead of doing so that's the full family. I think I did all of them. So I go down with this plus one other one. So this plus the fifth string. This plus the third string. This plus the second string. So then I'll do it in drop two and four here. So, so now I still have this note that has to go down. I'll go. That's pretty. So that is um, taking D minor six. I'm gonna go down with A and I'm gonna go down to the top string note, B. And I guess, and the way it works is that um, whatever the other note is, is your root. So see, um, when I go down with that, uh, that's, that creates a B flat seven. So I go down with the A and I go down with one other note and whatever other note it is, is what the root is. So you see, so I go, that's E seven because I went down with F to E. So and then I go down with my D. So, yeah, got a little confused for a second. So that's all of those. So see, look, um, I got my fifth. So that was the fifth string. I did the second string, and I'm, I'm missing uh, the first string. How about the first? The first string was the B flat one. Or, and then, uh, uh, yeah, that's all. And then this, if I just go down two whole steps on that string, that gets me to the actual G7. So, and there's my tritone spiner. So I could go like, you know, gosh, I'll go up. It's a lot to explore. So I'm going to go. So what I did there was I went down with my A and down with E, making E7. Now G7, then triatones minor. So it's just fun to explore these things, and you're kind of moving around your painting, you know, these colors. So I'll do that again. So I'm going to go. So, so. And then maybe. You know, a lot of kind of funny motion, but you can explore this stuff and uh, have fun with it. You know, I think it's just a blast. I'm just getting into this. So like I said, so here's my A. So I'm gonna go, and then, that's what I do. So that is borrowing half steps below, 
So what is that? I'm going, uh, this is, yeah, so I went, um, you know, so what I did there was I took my A, I went down to half step, I went down to half step with the fourth string, and it gets me to, um, B flat. <laughs> so, so, you know, that's a pretty sound. It's just about like, it's about just, you know, seeing the main chord and then just moving down and seeing where the fifth is. So this is an extra drive to do something that we should already be doing, which is seeing each part of the chord, but in particular on the minor sixes, when we want to do the substitution for the dominant, you want to see the uh, where the fifth is. And this works for, so if I were doing the tritones minor, so like say, um, this is the tritones minor, right? This is G7. So that is A flat minor six. And I'm going to see this in relation to the tritone, of course. So this, that's the relationship. But I'm gonna go down and I'll just find that same family again. But um, the end result's a little different because I'm hitting the tritone more strongly. So here's E7. So I could go. So that did D minor 6. I did the trick, so I went down with A and also the F, knowing that I'm going to hit E. And then, and then, that's pretty. just fiddling around with all of this uh, right now, but I think it's really fun, and um, so that is my response right now to um, my buddy Chris over at Things I Learned from Barry Harris, and uh, I would love uh, to hear your guys' thoughts and, um, and to hear some ideas that you guys have with it. Um, that would be really cool. Uh, I think there's a lot to explore here, but the idea of um, seeing that moving down with the fifth of the minor six and with one of the other notes by semitone gets you family members in relation to your main dominant seventh is a pretty fun idea. Uh, thanks for watching and there'll be more to come and happy Thanksgiving and keep on practicing.